Praise the Lord, everybody. You are in tune to the Life Application Bible Study of Whole and Whole Life Changing Ministries located in Lansdowne, Virginia, where our founder and senior pastor is Pastor Michelle C. Thomas. I am Pastor Marion King. I have the pleasure of serving as assistant pastor. And so on tonight, we simply welcome you into this space, this place of worship, uh, this time of pulling up to the table where we can uh, dissect the word, where we can uh, sit and allow the Holy Spirit to pour into us individually and collectively and leave the better because of it. Amen. Come on and bow your heads with us. Dear kind and heavenly Father, we thank you now. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. Lord God, we thank you for this day because we recognize it is the day that you have made. And so on purpose, we are grateful and we are glad in it. On purpose, we come with our arms lifted, our hands lifted and praising uh, your holy and your matchless name. On purpose, we come with expectation on tonight, recognizing that we could be any place, but uh, you saw fit, Lord God, to keep us in our right minds and keep us with a desire to be here and to be in your presence. On purpose, we come with expectation, recognizing, oh God, that it is your word that will uh, create in us a clean heart. It is your word uh, that will grow us. It is your word that will cleanse us. It is your word uh, that will change our minds about uh, how we how we move, how we love, how we breathe, how we walk. It is your word, oh God, that we need to make it. And so we invite you on this evening to come into the midst of us. We ask now in the name of Jesus that you would work in us individually, work in us collectively, and that when we leave here, our testimony will be, it was good for us to have been here. Now we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. It is in the name of your precious son, Jesus, that we lift our prayers, we say thank you, and amen. Amen, 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 amen. We are happy on this night that we have opportunity to come uh, to the table. We are happy on this night that we have opportunity to delve into this word, uh, this chapter 37 that um, Pastor Michelle so uh, richly and masterfully lifted uh, in our presence on Sunday. We are happy uh, on tonight about the thing that God is doing in our lives. Uh, we want to say good evening to uh, those who have come into the Zoom, to our Deacon Bruce on tonight, to Deacon Kamel, to Deacon Janine, uh, to Dr. Deans, and to um, our, 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 well, baby girl Peyton, to uh, Minister-elect Peyton. We know that she is... Um, She's caught um, on tonight trying to get some studies done. So she may wave in every once in a while, but we understand, Sweet Pea, uh, that you have um, a task before you, and that is to handle uh, this year with grace and to allow God to move you through um, all of these uh, courses that he's blessed you to be able to take. So we love you. And we look forward to you waving in at some point. Amen. 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 Listen, on Sunday, uh, Pastor Michelle took us further into the word. We were in uh, chapter 37 in the book of Genesis. And those of you who have been taking this journey with us, you know uh, that we are in the series, uh, Back to Basics, God's Purpose, God's plan and God's design for our lives. And chapter by chapter, verse by verse, um, event by event, we are just uh, learning so much. And again, we end up in a very meaty chapter um, that has a lot of meat on the bones. And so we're going to uh, endeavor to jump in and look at some specific places and then um, we know that the Holy Spirit is going to make the difference in the rest of it. Amen. Uh, Deacon Janine, you have the scripture for us tonight, or is it Deacon Bruce? Who, who has the scripture for us tonight? Peyton has the scripture that she's pulling up right now. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, ma'am. She's multitasking. God mm -hmm. bless you. 
Amen. Amen. Um, Pastor Michelle read in our hearing um, on Sunday, she started reading at verse number three and concluded right around verse number um, 11. Uh, do we have a reader in the mist on tonight? Someone who will read uh, those scriptures for us so that we can jump in. I see you, Deacon Janine. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, I can read. And so we're going to go to, you said we're, we're going to do Genesis 37 and we're going from three to 11. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And we're in NLT. So I'm going to pull it up here so that way I can make sure that I have all of it versus what's just on the screen. Okay. Okay. So I have Jacob loved. Um, I'm sorry, what 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 iteration do you want me to read? Is oh, New Living Translation okay? New Living Translation is perfect. Yes, ma'am. So Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day, Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't say a kind word to him. One night, Joseph had a dream. And when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the field tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly, my bundle stood up and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. His brothers responded, so you think you will be our king? Do you? Do you actually think you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way he talked about them. Soon, Joseph had another dream. And again, he told his brothers about it. Listen, I have had another dream, he said. The sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowed low before me. This time, he told the dream to his father as well as to his brothers, but his father scolded him. What kind of dream is that, he asked. Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow to the ground before you? But while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father wondered what the dreams meant. Amen. Thank you so uh, very much. Uh, as we begin to jump into um, the scriptures on tonight and to look at uh, aspects of what uh, the Holy Spirit is leaving for us or preparing for us, for us on tonight, um, Pastor Michelle's subject on Sunday was, I am not my dysfunction. And um, I, I know if you were in if you were in the midst, if you were in um, the place of worship on Sunday, we were virtual. Uh, if you were with us on Sunday, uh, you left exceptionally blessed, and uh, you left exceptionally um, inspired to take a look at the dysfunction in your life. Uh, we all have some dysfunction. We have some dysfunction in our lives. We have some dysfunction in our family. Um, we have some dysfunction uh, around us that, that engulfs us and causes us to um, repeat patterns over and over and over again. And oftentimes we repeat them without even recognizing why uh, we're repeating them. When we know anything, we're dead center in the middle of doing something that we said years ago, I will never do that. Uh, because when we looked at it from afar, um, it didn't look appealing to us. Uh, when we looked at it from afar, um, it was offensive to us, especially if it was in our family. But if we um, are not mindful of our footsteps, if we're not mindful of our mapping, if we're not mindful of our choices, uh, we will end up doing uh, the exact same thing that we said uh, years ago, months ago, days ago, hours ago, uh, that we would never do. Um, I, I remember uh, my grandmother said, never say never. Because if we don't... Um, put a plan in place to avoid never, uh, we'll find ourselves right in the midst of doing that exact same thing. Uh, does that make sense uh, on tonight as we put that um, in the atmosphere? Uh, there were three specific, there were, there were a lot, but there were three specific, I was trying to narrow it down um, to uh, three specific places in the word. And I, I'm prayerful that um, as we open them up, that there are others. That's fine. If you move us to that screen, that's fine. Um, 
uh, we see on the screen, I am not my dysfunction. Um, Pastor Michelle gave us some things uh, that we must be mindful to do. And that is to obey God's will, uh, work with diligence and integrity, um, to be careful about favoritism, to cling to God's word, hold on to the promises of God, um, to use our words wisely, uh, to guard our emotions and learn how to keep um, our emotions sin free. And so in that, she was talking to us about six ways to uh, protect ourselves and our families from dysfunction. Um, I have this one question um, that was resonating in my spirit, and I simply want to put it in the atmosphere and word it this way. Um, how many times in our lifetime have we been stuck or hindered by our dysfunction, uh, by who people say we are, by who people say we are not, by um, the, the, the hiccups and the, the roadblocks and the stumbles that take place in our family over which we have no control when it's happening, um, but we do have an opportunity uh, to live beyond it because we're still here which means we have an opportunity to make a better decision. But how many of us fail to do the work to make a better decision, fail to um, learn from, learn the lesson to the degree that we make a change? You know, we say, oh, we, we learn from the fact that this went wrong, but what have we done to change um, that course, what have we done uh, to put some things in place that will steer us away from that particular thing happening again? So we may, we may have learned in theory because it didn't look good, it didn't feel good. And uh, when we were going through it, um, we, we made some declarations that we would never go through it again, but what have we changed in order to not fall prey to that particular uh, area of dysfunction, not fall prey to that particular uh, dysfunction. Um, I heard Pastor Michelle on Sunday say, um, dysfunction is something that happens to you and you agree with it. Isn't that interesting? Dysfunction is something that happens to us and we agree with it. We agree with it. We, our actions and our behavior um, suggest that we agree with it when we haven't put, it, put a plan in place to move beyond it, to be better than it, to separate ourselves from it, um, to declare a moratorium on it. Amen, somebody? And likewise, um, I don't hear anybody out there but I know there's some people. Um, amen, 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 amen. I know there's some people amen. in the virtual room. Amen. Um, likewise, um, she said, uh, deal with how we got to the pit, how we got to the dysfunction. Uh, there's something about this particular um, chapter, something about this particular story um, in this uh, part of Jacob's life um, that involves Joseph. And as many times as you have heard it through your lifetime preached, a lot of the focus or taught, a lot of the focus has been um, going from the pit uh, to the palace. But what about, listen, what about um, what ended us up in the pit in the first place? Ah, uh, what about that? What about all of these areas, um, these, these areas of malfunction and dysfunction before we are postured to get to the palace. What about that? Because some things, some of the things along the way um, are within our reach to do better, are within our reach uh, to change. Um, I, I, I want to uh, submit to you that perhaps I agree with um, Pastor Michelle, Joseph talked too much. I don't know if he, I, I can't 
um, say, the scripture doesn't say, and, and we can have our own thought on whether he talked so much out of innocence or he talked so much because he knew he was in that space of the favorite and he knew he was antagonizing his brothers every time uh, he talked about uh, the the blessing or he talked about the dreams that he had and the fact that um, they spoke to elevation of him above his brothers. There are a lot of reasons why uh, we talk a lot. Sometimes it's out of innocence, but sometimes it's, it's to antagonize the people who don't treat us well in the first place. The scriptures say, that the brothers had nothing good to say to him. They already, when we come into the story, the scriptures already uh, talk about them uh, hating him before he had had, before a dream is recorded. So what that means is if he's 17 years old, uh, when this takes place, when this scenario begins to unfold, that means for 17 years they have hated him because they have had to live in the shadow of the favoritism that uh, their father, um, who has fathered them all, uh, has shown to this one child out of all of them, out of this whole tribe. They've lived in the shadow of the favoritism that was upon this brother and the fact that the father did not keep it a secret. He didn't have a problem with it. And so um, it is necessary that we deal with how we got uh, to the pit, how we got to uh, this place of dysfunction. I also um, uh, highlighted this particular place in uh, the message as we were going forward. Um, Pastor Michelle talked about dream killers. Uh, she said, dream killers are killers um, before they get to you. In other words, and, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing it. And so as I was scribbling down some, some notes, I said, uh, when we run into a dream killer, it's really not personal. You ever thought about that? Because we walk around offended. We walk around insulted. Uh, we walk around uh, severely bothered by the fact uh, that someone has attacked our dream, has attacked us in that area. Um, when if we take a moment and step back and we can identify them um, under the umbrella of a dream killer, that's just what they do. And we just happen to be the next target on their path. It could have been anybody's dream. It was just us this time. Amen. And so um, as I put those particular things in the atmosphere, um, I want to um, back out a little bit and open it up so you can share with us uh, what's in your belly. Uh, on this evening, because I know um, you came to the table hungry, but I know you came to the table with a snack. I know you got something to offer. And so we're looking forward uh, to you jumping in on this evening. I see Mom Crooms is in. Good evening, ma'am. I see Sister Carlene is in. Good evening. How are you? Our brother Ray Deans is in. Good evening. Hello. Amen. Brother Calvin is in. Good evening, sir. We we all no, are here. We we all are here. Just say good evening. Now. How are you doing? Oh, 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 bless his holy and righteous name. Uh, good evening. Uh, the <laughs> Bostic family. The Lord bless you. Yeah. Come on with it. <laughs> good evening, Doctor Deans. We're happy to see you on this evening. And so, um, let me let me see who's jumping in this evening and and gonna get us going. Um so that we can get this discussion going. I see you, Sister Carlene, come on. Good evening, everybody. I, I evening. just, um, I thank you for the, the opening. And um, <laughs> I really was surprised myself with what I got from the word, which is so different from what I've been hearing it 
what I've heard it preached. And uh, what stood out to me is um, the journey to the pit, that journey, like how that, how that occurred. Um, I too was thinking about Joseph and I think it started before, it's possibly started before he was born, you know, because his mom was his dad's favorite wife and she finally got pregnant when, you know, um, so I can imagine that excitement um, with um, Rachel, 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 Rachel. And, um, you know, so when he was born, that had to be special. And of course he lost his mom at a young age. So it, it, could, it could possibly be that there was a whole lot of feelings going on you know, from the moms and whatnot about this baby. And of course, when he showed up, it did not help that his father thought he was, just, you know, treated him like he was a favorite. Um, and uh, so I, I just felt like that it was a long road to the pit and it was rough. He, he would be what we call, like he was bullied, right? <laughs> he was bullied the whole time. And uh, there's, you know, sometimes when there is a child that's born and that's favorite and it's and and they're they're bullied, then the parent tends to step up with the cherishing a little bit more, which doesn't help, you know. And and so for whatever reason, his father gave him this coat that made him that made him stand out. What I wanted to what what it had me do was check for areas of dysfunction, check for areas because I never recognized until pastor said it oh we talk about from the pit of the palace but she said oh we, we who built this pit this pit was built you know and she was talking about a check but checking for errors of dysfunction is a is is a um it's a it's a necessity i feel because every man is right in their own eyes so we always feel like we're okay until we get feedback or until the Holy Spirit checks us. But if we're able to respond correctly to the checks and we're able to make changes when dysfunction come up, errors of dysfunction are pointed out or that they come up, then you can we can avoid some pitfalls um, and some heartbreaks. So that's what I wanted to say. Amen. Thank you so much for getting us going. Um, as you were sharing, um, I thought about um, that, that checking for areas of dysfunction. Um, we find in our humanity so many times that we don't want to appear um, dysfunctional. We don't want to appear um, as though we, we don't want to show up like we have weaknesses when we know we all do. Um, and so we uh, subscribe to the spirit of avoidance. In other words, we, we think that if we avoid it, it's not real. Well, it is real. And when left unchecked, it just tends to snowball and snowball and it becomes a bigger and bigger and bigger problem. And so um, what we cannot do um, as the body of Christ, because we have a twofold um, mission to begin with. Uh, we have that mission that requires us um, to live according to the word, uh, to subscribe to the word, and to govern what we do by the word. Um, but we also have this mandate on us to go out into the hedges and the highways and um, compel men and women to come. And so that, that, that mandate of compelling men and women to come, uh, we've talked about it before, people draw to what is attractive. And if um, our dysfunction is so visible, um, our dysfunction is so, um, so has so much control in our lives and it is causing us to uh, malfunction um, on such a great scale along the way, uh, we cannot be that attractiveness 
um, to draw uh, men and women to God. And so while we're living this life, uh, we're yet uh, still advancing the kingdom. So we have to pull this into ourselves and check ourselves, whether it feels good or not. We have to get past uh, the what feels good. Because this is not about what feels good. This is about what is good uh, for the kingdom. Amen. 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 Deacon Kamel, I saw you come back on camera. Are you coming in, sir? I can't hear you. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to come on in. All right. Come on in. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I, I, was, I was just sitting here just... Um, meditating on this word and, and looking at the, um, the, uh, the points from Sunday. And as Sister Colleen was bringing forth what, what her words were saying, I just wanted to uh, follow up just on that. Is that it's amazing. God had blessed Jacob at his old age to have a son. And so I come by tonight to say is that when God blesses us, we got to be we got to be very um, sure and really careful about how we how we carry out that blessing that God blessed us with. We have to be very careful. Because because. Jacob, Jacob made it too big of a deal over over the over, over the blessing that he damaged, he, he, he damaged everything else around him. And so he that he made a he, he was so thrilled about having a child at, a, at an old age. That he didn't even recognize his other kids even mattered anymore. He made a big to do. He was on purpose to make a big to do over Joseph, and he was very clear on how he wanted to to, to tell the world, and really make him feel. In in verse three, there it talks about he made him a special robe, because he wanted to make sure that you know saying his son was special. He wanted to exemplify how special he was to him for how God had blessed him. But as Pastor said in one of her points. We got to be careful of favoritism. We have to be very careful of favoritism. You can be creating, you can be thinking you're doing good, but you're creating dysfunction by the goodness that you're thinking you're doing and having a one-way track of our mind of how we do stuff. And so when it's selfish reasons, and so to me is Joseph, to me and from the word I'm reading here, Joseph took a blessing and he really turned it into a curse to the point of, he breaking up his whole family with his brothers didn't even like one another. All his brothers turned against their other brother just because of how the father made a big to do over one person. And so I come by tonight to tell you is that we have to be very careful because love, love is not about a feeling as we talked about earlier. You got to go out of yourself when you love, you, you, don't, you don't base it on how you feel. You love to glorify God. And so I come by tonight to tell you, as I was just sitting here looking at that, be careful of the words that you use in talking about exemplifying God's blessing. And so just imagine just standing there. I'm just, I can imagine putting myself in the place when I wasn't Joseph. Uh, I wasn't uh, Joseph and his dad was talking about Joseph in front of me. How would it make his other brothers feel? He made them feel like, because they, for them to hate their brother like that in this scripture, it tells you that it, that dad didn't treat them the same way. He didn't reward them the same way. He didn't even recognize them the same way. And so I'll come by tonight to tell you that blessing that, that Joseph was given by God, he created the pit. He created the pit by his words, by his actions, by his behavior, and in why he exemplified his selfish love just for one of his sons when he had many of sons uh, and children. And so I'll come by tonight to tell you is that we got to make sure everything we do is not about us. It's got about be about being about glorifying God. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, thank you, Deacon Kamel. And, yes, and, and that was good uh, right there because um, actually, we, and I heard Pastor Michelle share this, um, we look at the scripture as though um, the pit started with the brothers when actually it started with the behavior of the dad. And so being a child that was favored, um, a child whose life was in danger because of the favor that was shown to him, 
um, who was in hiding for better than 20 years. Uh, my question is, why is it um, that we can't stop ourselves when we find that we are um, being the person who's perpetuating um, a situation that caused us harm? Why is it we can't stop ourselves? We have the whole word. What is it about our, um, our existence? What is it about uh, the space that we, <clears throat> excuse me, the space that we are occupying? What is it about the posture uh, that we're in um, that would give us, we will give our humanity permission to override uh, the word, permission to override uh, the spirit and to be found guilty of the very thing that caused us harm of doing the very thing, perpetuating the very thing, creating, creating an atmosphere for the very thing uh, that caused us harm ourselves. Amen. 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 Bless God. Uh, Deacon Janine, I, I see you, uh, ma'am. You, you, I see your thoughts moving. Come on, come on in and share something with us on this evening. Good evening, everyone. I think um, I, I, I absolutely agree with um, the perspectives that have been shared thus far. I think I really got caught up on um, the fact that Joseph, to your point, felt so compelled to share what he you know, what he, what he came to know, um, I, that thing really bothered me. And it bothered me because I, I'm just like, I, I don't understand to your point, your earlier point, you asked about like what, what the reason was, what your, the why, 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 you know, was he doing it to be, um, to, 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 to show, um, his superiority? Was he doing it because he genuinely thought that's what he should be doing? I would like to believe in I, my prayer is that he was doing it from trying to come from a place of, I'm sharing this with you because this is what's been given to me. But I have learned that everybody cannot receive what God has given you, um, you know, in, in the time that he's given it to you. And it's not necessarily for everybody to receive. So some things you just, you don't have to speak life to, you just have to be quiet with it. And if, and if God has given you a task or God has given you um, a vision or God has given you a, a, a prophecy, he will tell you when to release it. And furthermore, it'll be confirmed. So to me, the fact that there was no confirmation from his brothers, I don't necessarily, I'm not saying that God didn't give it to him. I just don't know if he was supposed to do that right then. And I've had to learn. Um, and it took me a long time because I didn't think, <laughs> if I think back to, I didn't think that I was going to get to the place where I would just be like, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to say anything about it. Because I was never that person. I was never that little girl. I, I was the one that told everything as soon as it happened. I, if, if it happened, I was going to tell it. And I had to learn. Uh, I mean, I learned some hard lessons because I wouldn't open up my mouth and speak all the time. And then I got to a place where I, I went, when, when, when I felt like it wasn't safe for me to speak, I realized that it wasn't, and not, that, not that it wasn't safe, it wasn't time. And ever, again, everything didn't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to speak life to everything. If God, I mean, there, there are some things, whether it's between you and your spouse, whether it's between you and your children, whether it's between you and your parents, there are some things that ju it's just for you and God. And if he wants everybody else to know, he will give them that revelation because his, everything is, going. whatever he wants to happen is going to happen. We don't have to put our mouth on it. So I can't, I, I really am, I really was stuck on this thing. Like this thing could have whole been avoided had Joseph just kept his mouth quiet. I mean, although we don't, we don't know what coulda, shoulda, woulda, we don't know. But here's what we do know. Him opening up his mouth caused a whole lot more conflict than probably necessary. So that thing stuck with me. I, I have learned this lesson over my life and I thank God that he has continued to, to, to show me um, when, when I've done the right thing by being quiet. And I'm to the point now where I'm like, let me just hold up. Let me just pull all the way back. I'm going to survey the scene. I'm going to make sure that this is what I'm supposed to say, who I'm supposed to say it with, because I don't want to speak anything. And I certainly don't want to bring that type of um, energy, not just energy, but that type of, of confusion. I, I don't want it. 
So if if God said say it, He's going to make sure I, I there will be no question in my mind. But I don't I don't feel and I and I and I again I wonder we don't know why, but I just I, I'm really concerned by this whole idea that He got to tell everybody. And after the first time He told him, He still ain't learned. He still go right back and tell him again. I wouldn't have said nothing, not nothing. If listen, brothers, if God wants you to know, He gonna tell you Himself because I ain't saying nothing. So I just, that really stuck with me. That truly, truly stuck with me. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I wanted, I wanted to Dr. follow. Deans, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to follow that with, in agreement with, with, with Janine and the others, um, that <clears throat> Joseph violated I mean, of the things that Pastor Michelle listed for us Sunday, he violated number several of them. Work with diligence and integrity. It looked like he was showing integrity when he was going back telling his daddy everything. But sometimes, as Janine says, telling everything just ain't the right thing to do. And then he was excited that God had spoken to him but you have to guard your emotions and learn how to keep your emotions sin free. You don't get so excited that you're telling it to the people who you know is not gonna, you, he knew his brothers were not gonna receive it. And it's like, um, I have a friend um, that's not in our church, that's a, that's a prophetess. And I'll call her and I'll say, why are you so quiet? She said, because God ain't told me to tell you yet. So there are times that 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 even though she is either excited or fearful for me because of what God has told her, she says it's not time yet. She is the one who told me to leave that job that I had up in Leesburg. And I said, well... You mm. never ca called me before. Mm. Um, I always called her uh, because she was, um, I always called her. And she says, well, today God told me to call you rather than wait for you to call me. So I think you have to guard your emotions until God is ready for you to release release or share or reveal those emotions and then i'm not sure joseph's emotions were sin free look at me the favorite son <laughs> i don't know that he did that it doesn't say that in the in, in the scripture but that is a way that that is the way his brothers received it whether it's the way he presented it or not so I think that that he was not he did not have integrity because he told everything he knew even before the dreams. Amen. And he did not guard his emotions. He did not guard his emotions. He just wanted to be a, a, a blabbermouth. And his emotions were not sin free in that he. I'm sure those are not the the dreams are not the only times that his brothers had talked ugly about him or, or didn't like him. You're supposed to observe and, and 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 respond to what you discern from your environment, not just talk 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 talk. So I'm just saying that um, he did he, he he didn't always act with integrity and didn't always guard his emotions. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Deans. Listen, I have this question um, for everybody. What will we do or what will we not do uh, to fit in when we are feeling like an outcast, when we're feeling like um, we don't belong, when we're feeling like um, this atmosphere, uh, the atmosphere around us in this place where we must dwell, um, this place where we must work, uh, this place where we must operate uh, when that atmosphere is not conducive to 
uh, growing us and causing us to flourish, but we always feel like um, somebody's got a foot on our throat. We always feel like um, uh, we are the, the outlier uh, because we sense that we are not, if we're not told directly, because um, sometimes people will just show you outright that they don't care for you. But what is it um, that we will not do? Uh, and I'm just putting this in the atmosphere because at the more and more I look at uh, Joseph's behavior and speculate, uh, because again, uh, the scripture doesn't tell us why uh, he did this. We can presume it was out of innocence. Uh, we can presume that uh, if we look into it deeper, um, who, if you know you're hated, except for the fact that you're trying to um, show your worth, try the people who don't think you are worth anything because they don't like you, um, the fact that you're trying to earn your spot, you're trying to show that you are valued, you're trying to uh, show that um, you know, you're special uh, because clearly the people around you don't think you are. What is it uh, we won't do uh, to try to win that position back or win that spot back or, or highlight who we are um, in our uh, humanity? Because clearly that's not a God move. That's, that's, a, that's a man move. That's a, um, here, let me tell you who I am since you missed the memo. You didn't get it. You didn't, you can't figure out who I am um, and you don't like who I am. So here, let me, let me confirm who I am. Francis said to me in, in Bible, I mean, in prayer <laughs> at 12 o'clock prayer, either today or yesterday, she said, Linda, God will figure out a way to get that message to you. Even though your niece is not calling you, giving you updates on your sister. I have a niece that lives in Alexandria who lived with me for four years while she was a student at Norfolk State. And she doesn't speak to me anymore. I don't know why. And that's the daughter of the sister who had the surgery. And I needed to know how she was doing. But Francis said, Linda, it's okay. And every day she was she would talk to my sister in North Carolina, and my sister would actually copy and paste and send and forward me the messages that she was sending to my sister. Then I got hooked up with her grandson, who was sending me more information than what she was sending my sister. So God will figure it out if you just pray. And I told the prayer line group, I pray. I've given it over to God. He'll work it out, not only for her and her surgery, but for me and my need to know how my sister's doing. I went to bed and went to sleep. That's what Francis told me to do. Mother Francis told me to go to bed and go to sleep and lower my blood pressure. And I did it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So God will Amen. figure out a way if you just uh, stay in his will, stay in his way, obey God's will, that first one there. Stay in his will, his word, and his way. God will figure out how to how to get that information to you. He'll work it out. Amen. He'll work it out. Amen. Yeah. He will work it out. Uh, Deacon Bruce, I saw you coming in, sir. Come on. Yeah, so, so I, I understand and appreciate and align with everything that everybody said. However... I wanted to ask a question <laughs> and something just came up to me while you were talking about these things. We can if, count on you, sir. Come on. If God has given you a gift to do something and if Joseph was and Joseph was anointed by God, we know that Joseph, God dealt with Joseph in dreams. And so was it that gifting in, in his journey with God and how to re deal with his gift, did he have to obey? 
obey God's will. Joseph had to work diligently and with integrity because of his gift. Be careful of his favoritism with his gift. Cling to God's word because of his gift. Use his words wisely when he's talking about his gift and guard his emotions to learn to keep his emotions sin free because of his gift of dreams. And so I, I'm thinking about it, it, like Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson was a gifted entertainer, but so he was really on a plane when he did the Thriller album all those hits. You cannot deny the man was touched by God. He had a, an ability of the music. He was an instrument of music. Whitney Houston was touched by God to have a voice. When she opened her mouth, it, it was just angelic. Uh, numbers of people and I just look at entertainers sometimes, and even people who are highly intelligent and who have a passion to come up with ideas and, 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 and visions and dreams, like uh, even Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was a gifted athlete, but as far as a person or a friend, many people described him as really not that pleasant to be around, but he had you undeniable gift and drive and competitiveness, but he was also six foot six with, with a vertical leap. So he had physical gifts. His gifting was that, that was his gifting that made that person dysfunctional. Because when Joseph, we talked about it here, Joseph didn't say, I am the anointed one. That had to do with his daddy and his mama. So when he was born, he was already the favorite son. He had nothing to do with that. And, 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 and so we, we even talked about that. We said that was the position his brother, that was the position he, his daddy took. He didn't come out the womb and say, you know, okay, everybody move over, forget about everybody else. I, I, I'm on the scene. That was between you and my mama. I had nothing to do with that. And you say, I don't know, and we don't know. We don't have the ability of God. I mean, it doesn't say specifically in, in the scriptures that he uh, played that up. But is that part of the lesson of this story that God gives us each a gift? And part of our journey is to learn how to be responsible with that gifting, with that individual assignment that God has given each one of us. He has given each one of us an ability and a skill and instruction to use that ability to reach somebody on this planet and to help them and, 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 and lift them. And we have to be wise, obey God's will to know when to speak, when not to speak when to work diligently, work with integrity, be careful about favoritism, all these points, even though it might not be on a national level, it might not be on a local level, it might not be anywhere, but somebody we may come in contact with might be that person who is depending on us to say, hey, how you doing? I really want to know. I want to take some time. When I say how you're doing, it's important that that how you're doing, you wait, we wait for a response to say, no, I really want to know. Or, or are you hungry? Can I get you a bite to eat? Are you cold? Can I get you a coat? You know, it's 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 a, it's amazing. I guess so. Is that gifting from God part of? That dysfunction. I just was interested to see the comments. No, it's the way you use the gift that's the dysfunction. I, I, I'm, I'm responding I, probably too quickly. I apologize. 
Come on but, in, ma'am. No, you're fine. You fine? <laughs> Come on in. That this this is why we're here. But I think it's the way you use the gift that's the dysfunction. It's not the gift itself. It's the way you use it, and you discernment. Discernment will teach you how to use it properly and appropriately, I believe. Lord, what do I do with this? And you might not say it out loud in words, but we should ask God to order our steps in everything big or small. And so if he does, then that discernment would teach us how to use our gifts appropriately amen. amen okay can i can i ask a question then um so if when joseph's daddy gave him the coat what was he supposed to do with the coat hang it in the closet <laughs> 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 oh, okay. Oh no. So how was his discernment to say, okay, daddy, I love you. And he, uh, it, it, at one point, let's say he wanted to please his, his, his father. Okay. You gave me a coat of many colors. This coat costs you something. Now you want me to act like it. I really don't like it. I really don't appreciate your efforts. But your work in the kingdom is not to please man. Your work in the kingdom is to please God. But Joseph, okay, okay, I agree with you in your work in the kingdom, but we're just talking about Joseph's daddy gave him a coat. We're talking about just Joseph and, and, and his daddy. Now, I understand there is a, this, we, this doesn't happen in a vacuum. The brothers are watching, but just between Joseph and his daddy, that interaction is, I gave you a coat to acknowledge my favor for you. But his discernment, his discernment should tell him that all these things have happened. In, it didn't happen in a vacuum. There were things happening all along, which made his brothers hate him. So his discernment, if he had prayed for discernment, his discernment would have told him not to highlight the acceptance of this coat. Yeah, I could I'm just talking to Bruce, y'all. Ignore me. I'm just talking to Bruce. Let me, let me jump in here right, right quick because I need to remind us that at this time, Joseph was 17. That, that was my point. And so when- He's a child. Yeah. Right. When his father gave him um, this coat, it could have been um, in our present day, gave him a car, um, could have been, uh, gave him a, an expense account with no limit, um, could have been, get, gave him anything of extreme value that was better than, um, that the, the gift itself showed itself to be better than anything um, that had been given to his siblings. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We, we, we they, everybody's coming in tonight. I love it. I love it. Uh, come, so, come on in. So I'm, I'm listening and we were mobile. So forgive me. Um, and when I look at this, you know, as I hear this word and how it resonates with me, I'm, I'm a youngest child. I'm a youngest of four. And so it's a few things that, that, um, I guess jump out in my spirit when we were talking about use your words wisely. And that, and that for me, I think about what if our words were currency? What if our words were currency? How would you spend your wealth? If you knew that your currency, right? When you run out, you're done, you're poor, you're, you know, you're broken, you're desolate. How, will, how would you spend your currency if, if your words were currency? Would you be so frivolous with them? Would you throw them just, you know, out there? Would you just, you know... Um, I, I think it'll be a lot less him and hawing if there was, if you knew the value of your words. And another thing too, I, I'm going to tell you, I, I don't, I wasn't there with Joseph. I, I can't say what he did at 17 because he received the code. I can't say that, but I know sometimes as the youngest, you got to fight for you. It's like you fight for the favor that's upon you. You're in a fight because the favor that's upon you. 
it, that might not be everybody's story. I'm just saying, um, I'm not even gonna say that that's my story, but I'm just saying, when you have favor upon you and people recognize that favor that's on you, you could very well um, be on the side of uncertain. You could be, you could very well want to share in your wealth of wisdom, but you don't know how to use your gifts yet. And that doesn't always go over well. That's not always received well. A couple other things that just dropped in my spirit in question, um, in question form, I should say, how do you wear your favor? What does favor look like on you? When you put your, when you put your coat on, when you step into your car, when you, when you exercise whatever your bank account, when wealth falls on you, what are you doing with, how do you wear your favor? What does that favor look like on you? You know, you can, you listen, you can have on a blouse. Don't nobody know whether it costs $700 or $7. What does that favor look like on you? H how do you, how are we wearing our favor? And when you know that you have favor, not only, you know, in growth, when you grow, you're fighting to, you know, could Joseph have felt like I, I, I want to be included? I don't want to be discluded. Let me tell you, just, just a small portion of uh, my own personal experience. When you have people say in your family that will say, you know, you know, you're my favorite. You know, you're the favorite. You know, you're the chosen. You know, you're. But I, you're not opening their mouth to say it. So when that is heard from other ears, and you know, I will say this, one thing I love about the scripture, it tells you right there, hate exists. Hate in family exists. So if anybody ever had the question, could my sister hate me? Could my brother hate me? It tells you in scripture, you know, right there. And that should he have kept talking? I'm not gonna say, you know, he should have, but to say, well, no, I don't agree with that. But I will say, um, you know, this is, he's favored by God. He was born into favor and his life depicted that of which favor looks like. So how did it look on Joseph? And his brothers wanted that favor. But the beautiful thing about God is God has his favor for each of us. My favor don't look like your favor. Your favor don't look like, you know, my favor don't look like Calvin's favor, but what God has for me, and, and I think for a, the big takeaway is how you respond and not in how, how emotions, uh, keeping your emotions sin free. Because when you respond with emotion, it will be clouded with sin. It will be riddled with sin. And if it's riddled with sin, somebody gonna walk away hurt. That's just the God's honest truth. So that's just, that's just my takeaway. I don't, I'm not saying, I mean, I do, I hear everyone, but, you know, being, being a youngest of four, I'm just saying, you know, sometimes favor is just on you. It's just on you. And when it's on you, you got to learn to be in the place where you can just thank God for it, regardless of what anybody think about how your favor looks on you. So I got this coat. I didn't tell my father to give me this coat. I didn't ask for the coat. But it's a nice coat. I'm just saying, you know, I <laughs> I'm speaking from the perspective. Listen, I didn't ask to be the fourth child. I didn't ask to be the baby girl. I didn't know. Listen, I am the look. I'm the third girl, fourth child. My number is 34. I know my place. I know, I know my place. But I also know. God's favor and hand is on me. So it comes a time where when you fighting for the approval from outside approval of your favor, you no longer have to fight for it because you know it's God given to begin with. So accept it or not, but guess what? It's going to be what it's going to be. I'm sorry. That was a game. That's my game time. Yeah, I just came from a game. I'm, I'm a, amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 Come on, mom, crooms, crooms. I saw you coming in. I agree with what everyone was saying. But I also would be like, he's 17 years old. If everyone wants to be loved on the same crowd and be, you know, kept by everybody, I just felt that. But come I, in just a little bit closer. You're fading. I, I just feel that he's telling his brothers every 
We can't hear you. Oh, hold on one second. Okay, back. I don't know what you did before. Back up a little bit. Can you hear me now? Yes, that's the spot. Like I was saying, um, you have a kid of 17. And the children, they want to be loved and, and want to be with the in crowd. And I think with him, he was like, he could tell you about everything that God told him. But they would like him more. They would get along with him more. They would uh, get him enjoying everything that they did. And I think he did it more that way than just to uh, boast about it or just to say, I know this. I think he just let you know exactly what he wanted to be with them. If he told them something new, something they didn't know. We're losing you. They would appreciate him more. I caught part of it. I didn't catch of it. I didn't catch all of it. Your mic is acting up again. The night we had some good nights, but it's cutting up tonight. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Praise God. We, we're going to try it again in a few minutes. Okay. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Listen, th this this is good. I, I, as as you guys were sharing, um, I, I scribbled some things down, just food for thought because there are all kinds of scenarios that can attach themselves to this. But the reality is this, listen, um, Jacob, I, I, I have to go back to Jacob and I have to put um, some of this burden on him um, because he was the favorite child and he knew um, what that caused. It, it wasn't like he was a favorite child and um, everything went well uh, in, in, in the fact that he um, rested in that spot and nothing transpired um, negative. Uh, he knew what that spot, what that spot could do. Uh, he knew the power um, and, and the possibility that it had uh, to totally uh, disrupt and break apart a whole family. And so uh, my, my problem um, with Jacob is this. Um, you have subjected your son. Yeah, he's your favorite. Yeah, um, his mother was your true love, um, the wife you really wanted. Uh, yeah, all of that is true. But you subjected him um, to this, this position of dysfunction. You subjected him. You put him in a spot. Um, that caused him to perpetuate uh, dysfunction. Uh, you put him in a place where, um, I heard you, Minister-elect LaShawn, uh, being, being the, the youngest uh, for a great period, remember now there's one more son born after him, uh, Benjamin, but um, being uh, the youngest certainly for some years and being uh, the son of uh, Jacob's favorite wife or the wife that he really loved, um, he had to try to shore his spot. He had to try to fight uh, for where he was. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just imagining being in that position where uh, it's more than just his brothers giving him a rough time because they're older. Uh, they actually uh, put some emotion with this. They actually... Um, attached the spirit of hate to it. Uh, they actually um, uh, had carried a, a, a disdain for him uh, because they recognized that they were living in the shadow of his favoritism. They had been here um, however many years they had been on the earth and had been their father's sons. Here comes this one little child that has taken the spotlight um, or attention off of them, and uh, the father knowingly um, has put the spotlight on, on Joseph. And so he puts him in uh, several awkward positions, no doubt uh, coming up through the ages from birth to uh, 17, he's learned how to uh, persevere. He's learned how to, because the spirit, the, the scriptures never speak of, watch this, they never speak of Joseph being 
uh, downtrodden in terms of they never speak of him being um, depressed because of how his brothers um, treated him. Um, the, the, the spirit, the scriptures suggest that every time he had a dream, every time something excited him, he would burst forth with excitement uh, to tell it. That is not the, that's not the pathway of somebody who is depressed. Um, that, that, is the, that is a path or that is a symptom of someone who's fighting their way back, knowing that they're in a position uh, with these people, uh, his siblings who already don't like him but he's claiming his spot he's he by any means possible now should he have talked less he sure should have he should have kept his mouth shut but he didn't and so um with with this lesson we're learning um that everything god tells us uh is not for us to go blabbing and telling um that there's a season when uh, what God has told us, some things are personal. They're between us and God. And there's a season uh, that he will bring it to fruition. There's a season uh, that he will cause it to manifest. And so our takeaways, our, our takeaways from um, this lesson, this meaty, meaty lesson, there's so much more, um, is that we watch this, um, can find ourselves in dangerous positions if we are the benefactors of favoritism, we can be putting people in dangerous positions if we um, enact favoritism upon um, our children or people who are close to our heart. And it's so open that it causes other people to feel uh, not one. It causes other people to feel less than, causes other people to feel uh, like they're uh, position or their spot doesn't matter. Uh, we have to be mindful uh, that as we recognize dysfunction, watch this, as we recognize dysfunction, that we are mindful not to play it again and again and again. So what is the thing? Uh, wh where is the period? Where um, do we put the thumbtack to stop the cycle of dysfunction? Certainly, if we have the ability and the wisdom to recognize it as dis dysfunction, to define it as dysfunction, then with um, God on board, with the Holy Spirit on board, certainly um, if we have the desire, watch this, if we have the desire to do better, then we will do better. And so there's so many takeaways um, in this, this, this working with diligence and integrity, I want to submit to you that um, working with diligence and integrity uh, would require me um, not to um, run and tell everything, to, to, to imagine or to at least um, to think or consider that this might be a setup for the people because I'm being sent to watch the people who already hate me. So I need to I need to watch how I do that. I need to watch how I maneuver in that space. I need to uh, make a decision as to whether or not um, it's a healthy decision, whether or not it's a wise decision, whether or not it's beneficial. Um, so I, I, I need to make some decisions here. Should I be so excited about running and telling? Um, even if that's my job, how, 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 do I, how do I operate in that space in such a way um, that I get the job done, but I'm not glorifying the opportunity to call people out? I'm just putting stuff in the atmosphere. I'm, I'm, I'm putting it in the atmosphere because there have got to be um, some great takeaways for us. Not all of us are um, the youngest, but many of us have been the favorite. Not all of us um, are the siblings in question, but many of us have been the 
um, parents who have favored one over the other, even though uh, if we were held to course on it, we would say, ah, no, not so much. I just let them have a little more um, rope because. So we justify it. But in actuality, uh, that justification is the definition of showing favoritism. So there have got to be some, some practical takeaways, some practical things uh, that we can take with us, that we can write down, that we can go back and look at. Um, I heard um, Sister Carlene say it caused her to go back and to check some areas of dysfunction and actually examine them. If nothing else, watch, if nothing else, every last one of us, if you are listening to us by way of Facebook, if you are with us by way of Zoom, if nothing else, you must leave this spot right here tonight uh, with a willingness to go back and to begin to um, investigate those areas of dysfunction uh, in your life, those areas of dysfunction in your family and own them, watch this, be willing to own them um, enough to do something about them. I see you, Brother Calvin. Come on in, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Can, can you, oh, oh, let me put this down. Okay. All right, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, and the echo is gone. Okay, all right. Um, I was I was thinking from a standpoint, I, I get the, the showing the favor, I get all of the things, but if you look at, if you look at the, the dynamics of their family, though Joseph was not from the first wife, Joseph is from, he, he's from, uh, another he's from his lineage is from the mo the other mother so it's not it's not going to be the same and so jacob jacob already his love was for the second second mom in a sense so those kids and how you choose i guess you could say to put it in to put it in real terms you look at today's family if you get a family that is a blended family and they have their natural born children and then they marry their the they're supposed to be able to take in those those children that if if that woman has children and then love them the same way but that takes time because of it is not of that that union any kid that is there is different so there is a i guess you would say a a natural a natural instance to have a have a favor because that's your first from what he wanted it, it may not be his first child but it's the first from the union that he had and the union that he actually wanted with with joseph's joseph's mother so that leads you to believe that what he got the coat um and how it was and all those things was of the best because guess what it wasn't joseph's fault it was dad jacob israel's fault for being, bringing this in there. So now it's like cancer. It's a little bit, it's a, it, and there's no cure to that um, because it's kind of like a generational thing that he's, he's doing it. So he's dividing the family. So it started with Jacob and what he was doing. So Joseph, Joseph didn't ask to be here. Joseph didn't do that. Joseph is, is excited because of what he received, but it's out of the, mis the mistake or the, the the errors of ways from Jacob. It might be confusing. You know how I, I come in and I go out. So I'm gonna go out right there. <laughs> Why would you go out, sir? That's good. That's good right there. That is excellent because that um in fact shows us something. Um it it's amazing how we play to where our heart is. Mm. Yeah, yeah. 
we 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 lean to where our heart really is a, a lot of a lot of other things get our attention and we put time in and and we work with it but where our heart really is we can't help but you know tell okay that that that's close that's close to our heart so um even so, though I, I took issue with Jacob and I still take issue with Jacob not recognizing some things, you're so right because his heart. Yeah. 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 Come on, sir. You were coming back in. I think they're on they're in the same room with different devices going, so they can't figure out which one to unmute, I think. Okay, okay. Or they can figure it out, but I think Sean, I think they're battling. They're over there having Bible <laughs> bi Bible breakdown. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm talking, but there was no, I'm on mute. <laughs> okay, then you're back now. Sir. Oh, I'm, back, on in. Yeah, I'm back. I was having technical difficulties. Um <laughs> no, the just the like case of point. Now you heard from my wife and and her being the baby and the favorite. But I'm the oldest in my family. So I got the whole another dynamic. And I'm the oldest by nine and a half years. So of course my mom and dad are going, you know, I'm I'm the baby, I'm the firstborn boy, I'm the baby boy, the only boy for nine years. So there that's a decade almost of loving me and giving me, and and not only that, I'm the I'm the I'm the chosen son and grandson to the family because and this is going through my side of the family and on my mother's side of the family so then when now when my cousins are born when my when my uh aunt uh my brothers are born and they and all they see is oh calvin this calvin that how is that you know how am i supposed to make me feel i so do you temper yourself because of who you are, how you were, when you was born and, and those things, you know, or the success that you may have, you don't do it, but you don't gloat either, but that's from a teaching and an upbringing. And from that teaching and an upbringing from my mom and them, I knew that my mom loved me. I, and I always say, you know, I'm mom, I'm mommy's gold. I'm, I'm <laughs> you know, I'm that one, you know? And then later I would hear it from my, my sister more or less than, my brothers and I'm like, you know, you mommy's favorite. I'm like, no, she loves us all the same, but I am the first, like, you know, that's my reply to them, but it is not in a hateful way because my mom showed love to all of us, all of us. But to this day, and I'm 50, my sister's 40 and, and my, uh, my brother, you know, he's, he's, he's 42. So I'm just like, no, I am. Cause I can call mom and mom's gonna do this for you, mom. But I didn't give mom those problems. I didn't give mom problems. I did what mom and dad said, you know, but that's just amongst the siblings. But is there a favoritism? The favoritism comes from maybe the parent, but if the parent hasn't taught them how to be humble and, and, and be hum have humility, then, then you're gonna have those issues when you, it, within your family, you know, so. You, okay. Brother Calvin, that is good. That is good because um, that points us to, and it causes us to look at um, the fact that the scriptures do not record that there was any um, teaching per se of how to um, manipulate and how to exist in that space. Right. Because it's a difficult space. Yeah. Because then, because the person that is quote unquote the favorite, they have to deal with, should I not, should I not be excited for what I do, what I have and how my parents treat me? Here's another personal story. We have twins, twins are different. So if I, if one is doing well than the other one and you, you, you try, I've, I've personally had to kind of like damper how I celebrate one because I don't want the other one to have to suffer. But then you think like, why should I do that? Why can't I celebrate their joy? 
even though one is not doing well at this particular moment because you only get one shot at doing this and but they know i love them unconditionally regardless so i think it's a two-edged sword to be able to do that especially with how we are as parents and and having twins you know we've had to deal with that throughout their whole life you know in a sense so i'm getting firsthand of what this is and how it how it is because for years and i they've been athletes or do it good in school or whatnot. And then now I gotta be able to do that. And then don't let that baby boy try to, he has pressure because he doesn't, he might not feel that he's living up to the standard there. How does mom and dad feel? No, we love you unconditionally. And you're going to have different, your success can't be measured by what your sisters do, but your success can be what you do. You just can't, you can't quit. And that's our job as parents. And that's where I think, tying it in back to the to the to the word of where we are is where Jacob might have failed with with his upbringing of his children overall because that's the only way that they'll feel that way is because it's it coming from from the parents and that's my mic drop for the night that's good stuff that's good stuff sir that's a good place to drop it thank you very much come on Deacon um uh Janine and I, I, I'm cognizant of time um, and I recognize that, but I, I will say this, you know, this looking at um, this situation, it makes me appreciate being the only child. It truly, truly does, because I have never, ever dealt with any of the stuff that y'all talking about, ever, de never, because it's just been me. So I could be the favorite. I could be the, the unfavored one. Um, and, and I, but I also understand what brother Calvin was saying in the sense that, you know, with a blended family, I'm blessed tremendously in that my dad, my parents divorced and, and I say I'm blessed in that because they, they were better apart and my dad remarried and the woman that he remarried was, has been absolutely amazing. She's been an incredible blessing to me. And, and she is, at, she stepped in when, when I was 11 or 12, um, and, and really helped to rear me and, and shape me as the woman that I am. But I think it's different because she doesn't have any biological children either. So I never had to deal with that pull. Um, and it was cognizant when Diallo and I began to think about families. I knew growing, I, I knew I wanted to have more children, but I was always very leery of that favorite thing because my mother dealt with it, which is why she was so adamant about not having other children. So she dealt with the idea, she was the oldest, and but she didn't perceive herself to be the favorite. We later learned as my grandmother got older that my mother was a favorite because she was the oldest one. She was one she could count on and all of those things. But growing up, that's not what she felt. And so it was reiterated into me from a very young age that, you know, I didn't have more children because I don't want you to feel like you're not my favorite. And I don't want you to feel like you're not, you know, you're not treasured. Um, and so when Diallo and I began to have children, I was, I was really conflicted with that because I didn't ever want my children to feel like, I gave more, more of myself to either of any of them. And now having three girls, they are totally different people and they all require totally different things. Um, and and, and I, I see how parents fall into the trap because it is, it is, it is, it's, it's a human thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a personality thing. You naturally might gravitate towards something in one child than you would toward the other. But to Brother Calvin's point as well, it's about the rearing and it's about the way that you teach them and the way that you, um, you know, the, the way that you um, show them how they should react. And there's a running joke because people, people say that the baby, our baby is her dad's favorite. And, and, and I know that that's only because he was actually home more. He was already, he was close to, he, was, he wasn't ill when she was born, but he was ill. He's been ill for most of her life. And as a result of that, he was closer to her because he was home. Um, and it has nothing to do with being a favorite in as much as it just has to do with situationally what, what has occurred. So I think as parents, it is incumbent upon us to, to make sure that we uh, speak to and give light to all those things in our, children's, but in our children, but more importantly, teaching them that neither of them <clears throat> are more favored. And, and while they all have different gifts, giving them room to, to explore those gifts. And I think for me with Joseph, the challenge was that he couldn't, he didn't seem to understand. He didn't seem to get discernment. He got the favor. And I mean, being a whole side baby or the, you know, baby of side chick, that's a whole different ball game. Um, but, you know, but, but he never got the discernment of what should, what should I, what should I temper? What should I take back? Because I need to build my brothers up. 
Um, I don't want them to feel this way. He didn't seem to be concerned with that. So I think there are a lot of different things, but I'm, I'm again, I'm grateful that in, in my life, I haven't had to deal with a lot of it, but as a result of it, I'm now cognizant. And so it is my prayer that I don't replicate some of the challenges that, that, that I've seen generationally. And certainly with this, this, with this relationship, because I think it, it got really, really difficult. And I think had he just had different rearing and different um, mentorship in the way that he should deal with his gifts, then it perhaps would have had a different outcome. Amen. Amen. Listen, this is good stuff. We, we, we're in a good place. And I believe um, that we're leaving here um, blessed and we're leaving here with some tools um, to address our dysfunction. Uh, you can let me have the screen, Deacon Janine, uh, as we prepare to go um, home for the night. I bless God for um, the input. I bless God for uh, those of you who uh, had that pull in your belly on tonight and you shared, you put it on the table and we were able to glean from it because it's gonna take, it's gonna take a village. Uh, we talk about taking a village to raise our children. Uh, it's gonna take a village for us to um, burst through uh, dysfunction because we're gonna go through um, a, a boatload of emotions uh, trying to break through and trying not to uh, repeat uh, that cycle. And so on tonight, as we prepare uh, to go home from here, um, this is what we simply want to sow back into you, that you are not your dysfunction. Um, I love the way Pastor Michelle phrased it on Sunday. Um, she simply said this, that dysfunction is something that happens to you and you agree with it. And so we came tonight um, we often hear a uh, Deacon Kamel say, I came by just to tell you. We came by just to tell you on tonight that you don't have to stand in agreement with your dysfunction. It may be around you. Uh, it may be, um, may have turned out that it is a product of your environment, but uh, because of Christ and because um, of, the, of who he is in our lives, you don't have to accept anything uh, that does not look like him. Christ is not a dysfunctional uh, person. And so if we are, watch this, heirs and joint heirs with him, uh, then we likewise have the uh, ability and the mandate upon our lives to be functional uh, human beings. And we have uh, the ability uh, to reach out, to cry out, to pray out, to call out uh, for help and to pull ourselves out of, uh, with the help of God, out of that place that has um, defined itself as dysfunction. And so we simply want to say to you on tonight, we want to pour into you on tonight, we don't know what your dysfunction is. Uh, you don't know what my dysfunction is but we all know we have some dysfunction in our lives, but we understand on tonight, we are not defined by our dysfunction and it is able, we are capable of moving beyond, of changing the path, of redefining and lining up with the will of God for our lives. We don't have to be our dysfunction. We don't have to operate in our dysfunction as of this day right here. Uh, put a pin in it. Put a period behind it. Call it done in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen, amen. We are um, excited about this place that we're in because um, weekly we are finding out God's plan for us. We're finding out God's purpose for us and we're finding out God's design for us. And certainly we can sit on tonight, the one thing we know, you may not know God's full plan for you, but the one thing you know is that God did not plan and purpose you to be dysfunctional. Amen? 
Amen. Amen. Come on, let's get ready to go to the throne of grace. Um, certainly, if you're under the sound of our voice on tonight and you've not um, taken a chance on Christ, you keep trying to do this thing, uh, keep trying to define it, keep trying to do life by yourself. Well, um, I tried it. Uh, many uh, in the virtual room have tried it, and we all came to this conclusion that we couldn't do it because we kept hitting a brick wall. And so we want to offer Christ to you on tonight. Uh, you feel that pull, that tug in your spirit. Uh, you feel that thing in you that's turning over and over. Uh, per adventure, perhaps it is the tug of Christ on you. And we simply want to uh, reach out to you on tonight and to pray that you will just try Christ. I promise you, if you try him one good time, if you try him one good time, the things in your whole life will turn around. Does that mean you will never have trouble? Mm -mm, that's not what that means. But it means that there is a peace that will settle in you that you will understand that Christ is the only answer to get you to the victory that the word declares you are bound to have. Amen. Certainly, if you just want prayer on tonight, put your name in the chat, put your name in the feed on Facebook, and we count it an honor and a privilege to lift you uh, before the Lord. If you um, don't have a church family, don't have a church home, um, you might consider Holy and Whole Life Changing Ministries. This is a good place. This is a good family uh, to belong to. Thank you, Jesus. We have, um, we have someone who wants prayer on tonight. Amen. We got you, baby girl. God bless you. Amen. Let's get ready to go to the throne of grace. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. God, we give you praise on tonight for all that you are, all that you do, all, oh God, that you provide for us. We thank you for this word and how it has enriched our lives. We thank you uh, for your general, for how you sent the word through her on Sunday. We thank you, Lord God, that we have opportunity uh, to take a moment and to pause and to just look at um, the dysfunction that has surrounded us at different stages of our lives, the dysfunction that may um, even... Uh, exist right now in our families, the dysfunction that we are faced with, uh, perhaps on a, a daily basis, trying to live this life. And so we ask in the name of Jesus that you would help us now uh, to face our dysfunction, to uh, name our dysfunction, and give us courage and strength to deal with our dysfunction. Uh, we know that many are happy about getting from the pit to the palace, but we took Pastor Michelle's uh, question to heart. Uh, we took her directive to heart that um, our concern should not be so much for getting to the palace, but our concern should be for how we ended up in this dysfunction, how we ended up in this pit in the first place, that we will not perpetuate it, that we will not pass it on to our generations, that we will not be uh, the one who creates the dysfunction over and over and over again uh, in our family legacy. We thank you on tonight for the opportunity just to pause and to look at what it is uh, that is your purpose for us, what it is that is your plan for us and how dysfunction has no place in it. And so we ask in the name of Jesus that you would search us each one. We ask, oh God, that you would work on us. We ask, oh God, that you would work in us. We ask, oh God, that you would make us meet for your use. We give you glory on tonight. We give you praise on tonight. And we are thankful on tonight for all that you do. It is in the name of your precious son, Jesus, <clears throat> that we lift our prayer and we say thank you and amen. Come on and put your hands together. <clears throat> Give God glory on tonight. We honor God for all uh, that he has done in the presence of his people. 
and we look forward to seeing you. Uh, we are looking forward to our in-person um, worship on Sunday. Uh, Deacon Janine, I don't know if you have uh, the, lo the, the slide that has the location available, uh, but- I can get that, give me one second, I'll pull it up. Okay, all right. And certainly, um, if you don't know uh, where the location is, you know um, GPS is our friend when we're trying to get someplace that you would um, put it right in your GPS and look it up and see how far you are from that location. And perhaps you will consider coming out and worshiping with us on Sunday. We will be social distanced, but we will be blessing the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 We simply want to say that we love you with the love of the Lord. We bless God for opportunity to share with you. Uh, here comes, well, it was coming. Uh, <laughs> our, our, our slide was coming. Um, but we honor God for opportunity to worship with you. Here it is. We're going to be at the pavilion at Ashburn Station. Uh, the location is 43635 Greenway Corporate Drive in Ashburn, Virginia. Uh, this is the location where the Lord has seen fit uh, to place us as he is uh, moving us and doing some greater things for Holy and Whole Life Changing Ministries. So we look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Worship time is at 11. Uh, please bring your mask with you. Uh, we will have some if you have run out, but we are looking forward to a high time in the Lord. Is that all right? Amen, amen, amen. We want to say that we love you with the love of the Lord and we look forward to the next time that we have together. We bless you in Jesus' name, amen. Bless God.